Hello everyone, welcome to the latest in our series of Ask the Expert videos. And unusually for, for me as the connector geek, I'm going to be talking about something a little bit different today. I'm going to be talking about air preparation. Uh, people use pneumatics for all sorts of different applications, um, but it isn't just simply as uh, creating a, an air supply and plugging things in. There are all sorts of aspects of air preparation that we need to be aware of to be able to make use of this technology. And in this conversation today, I'm joined by Lisa Schlotz of Festo. So Lisa, welcome to the to the podcast. Hi, Dave. Pleasure to meet you. Fantastic. Thank you very much for joining us. And so I'm going to launch straight in with the, the first question and, and say, what is the role of air preparation in industrial applications? Yeah, a pretty good question. So, um, I mean, the best way to explain is um, to put the whole thing and to draw comparison with humans. So in this picture here, we can see an overview of all our products and in addition, in, in blue, the connection to the human body. So let's start on the top left side. The air preparation is like our heart. So it filters, cleans the blood to be prepared for our body. Um, and the same thing happens in our maintenance unit. So the air is prepared depending on the application. For example, particles, oil, water are filtered out. And furthermore, our components also need a stable pressure. So to set the pressure to a required level, you need a regulator. And um, after that, the air or blood needs to be transferred. And uh, this is then done by tubes or in our body in veins. Um, the next station on the right bottom side is the valve or our brain. So here we can control how things should behave. So should a cylinder extend and when, for example. And the last point on the top is then the actuator itself, which we also compare with our muscles. So this is where all the movement and automation happens. So that, that analogy, that comparison with the, the body gives us a very clear idea of, of all the different elements. Um, and in preparation for this call, we'll also, we were talking about how, how a, an air system actually com compares in quite a, 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 an interesting way with, with electrical circuits in that you have the load and you have the power supply and so forth. So from that point of view, you, you've shown us uh, what a, a well-designed air circuit looks like. And you've talked a little bit about the, the elements. Um, what are some of the best practices, some of the, the tips that you could give to people when it comes to creating an air system, a pneumatic design like this? Yeah, I mean, mainly what we need is a well-prepared compressed air. And this is as basis always on off valve to shut down the airflow for maintenance, for example, then a regulator to set the pressure to a required level, and last but not least, a filter. And this is also the reason we developed our new MS Polymer series. Here we focus on the main functions which are needed for the most applications, and all of that at an attractive price level, and still at a high FESO quality. So there you can find regulators, filters, and what is really, really cool, an electrical on-off valve, which includes a soft search function to ramp up the pressure in your system. So when it comes to designing uh, an air preparation system, what components would a designer need for uh, a complete system? Uh, yeah, sure. Thanks for the question, Dave. Um, let's take a look at this graph here. Uh, what we see is a service unit of three devices. The first one is an on-off valve. Uh, second is a filter regulator, like already said, it's a combination of regulator and filter. And these two components alone are sufficient in most cases to enable a proper compressed air treatment. Uh, therefore, we focused also on, in our new MS Polymer series on these two products and offer them already mounted as a combination from stock. And if you are not quite sure whether we still need a third module, a fine filter, for example, the diagram on the left bottom side can help us. It describes which filter stages we need to achieve a specific uh, compressed air class. Um, one of the things that you mentioned when you were just talking about that was filters. Uh, what role do filters play in these air systems in air preparation? Yeah, so a really, really big role. I mean, they are mainly responsible of the lifetime of a machine or automation line. If the compressed air isn't properly treated, it can damage the following products. 
So take oil, for example. Uh, depending on the components, oil can damage seals or blast it, which can result in leakage or complete failure of the components behind. So uh, what you see here in the picture is a combination of the two most necessary functions. It combines in one product a regulator to set the pressure to a certain level and a filter which filters the air. Okay, so filters are vital to almost every kind of, of air system, but are there differences in the design of these air systems for different industrial applications? Yes, definitely. So it depends very, very much on the environment and the application itself. Um, we've given some of the most common applications as example in the table below. So, for example, let's take a look at line two. Uh, here the air is filtered with a 40 micron filters to achieve a comp compressed air level class of 744. So 7 stands for the particle class. If we now add a 5 micron filter behind, even more particles are filtered out of the compressed air and then we achieve a class of 644. So the lower the number, the purer the air. And um, the two digits in the back stands for the uh, content of oil and water then. Okay, um, and you've mentioned water a couple of times now. So, what is why is it so important to to manage the water content in air supply? You talked about oil and how that can actually damage systems, um, but we we need to be talking about removing water from these air supplies. Why is that so important? Yeah, so water doesn't sound so critical compared to particles that have an abrasive effect. Um, but water can also destroy components, uh, for example, through corrosion. Um, which can then cause equipment to wear out and also completely da get damaged. And I mean, the other thing is microorganism. Uh, they could also form, which could be very critical in the food sector. I mean, we all do not want to have a bacteria or whatever in our food. And uh, therefore, it is necessary to look carefully where the compressed air is used and in order to determine which compressed air class is sufficient. And of course, it makes also no sense to prepare the compressed air perfectly if this isn't necessary. So this needs to be balanced and therefore you can always check the table to get a feeling what is needed. So we've talked about different applications. We've talked a little bit about, for, for example, the use of air in, in food preparation, where we need to make sure that it's, it's particularly free of particles, free of water, free of oil. Um, but one of the things that's, that we're talking about a lot at the moment, especially on Design Spark, we're talking about uh, the, the future of industrial automation. We're talking about the smart factory. Um, are pneumatics finding new applications within the smart factory? Uh, yes, of course. So, um, I mean, just like the most technical devices, such as mobile phones, cars, etc., the pneumatic market is also developing. And our products becoming more and more intelligent thanks to the corresponding sensor technology. So with the sensor on the regulator, for example, you can directly check the pressure level in the system or tracking these values over time. Okay, so the so the air system is integrated and becomes part of the smart factory. Uh, and, and for anybody who's interested in smart factory, we've got plenty of information on, on Design Spark about that. The fact that, that all of the aspects of the factory are taken into the, the central control layer so that everything is regulated from the, from the same place. Okay, one of the other things that Smart Factory does is help the operators maintain their systems. Things like predictive maintenance, the information that's gathered uh, is analysed to, to see how uh, we might be able to maintain the factory before it breaks down. Can things like air consumption tell us anything about the condition of the machines? Can, can air systems be used in predictive maintenance? Yeah, good question. Um, so what we see is it helps significantly in three major areas. So first is monitoring. Then second is predictive maintenance, which you already mentioned. And last but not least, we have energy efficiency. So let's start with the monitoring. Um, by adding sensors, you can tell even more precisely what the consumption values of a system are or machine, So, which is becoming more and more relevant when we think about energy saving, for example. 
secondly, we have predictive maintenance. So by tracking the consumption values, I can see at any time if something's changing in the machine. And this could be an indicator that where parts need to be replaced, like filter elements or ceilings. And then we have last but not least, uh, the topic of energy efficiency. And this topic has become more and more important in recent months, years. Uh, we do not see this only in private life, but also in industry. So what we did in the meantime, we've developed products that address all of these is issues. Um, so what does that mean? Um, by monitoring the parameters of the pressure and flow rate of the production, we can see whether a machine is in progress or not, maybe at the weekend. And then the pressure is automatically reduced or if desired, switched off completely. Um, depending on your machine. So no pressure, no consumption. And in addition, we can analysis uh, whether the leakage values have increased and if maintenance of components is necessary, like said before, changing ceilings, tubes, etc. So this means that not only compressed air can be reduced, but also corresponding costs. So in this way, we make a significant contribution to carbon dioxide reduction and to help companies to also reduce their costs. That's that's really interesting. And I think when we, we're going to release some more information on Design Spark when this video comes out. That's something that I'll explore a little bit more in that article about the fact that, that pneumatic systems have just as vital a role to play in energy efficiency as, as electronics might. Um, so that would be really interesting to, to analyze. So the last question I'm going to ask today is, is just about the new applications for pneumatic systems. Are there any new interesting ways in which air systems are being used? Yes, so what we see at the moment is a high focus on battery production. So everything around batteries for the car industry, uh, which also means special requirements coming from the environment itself. So therefore, we also offer a wide range of products which are made for this special environment. And this is also based on the uh, new MS Polymer series. And coming back to the energy saving, which is uh, still a big topic, um, I mean, the easiest way what you can do is reduce the pressure level itself. The lower the pressure, the lower the flow rate and the consumption. For example, uh, if you pick a cylinder, most of the times uh, you only have one working stroke. For the other, you can simply reduce the pressure level by our uh, new MS2 regulator. This is a really small um, but very efficient product and it saves a lot of energy in the simplest way. Um, just put it in front of a cylinder and simply reduce the pressure to your required level and easily save energy. This has been fantastic and it ties in so well with some of the things that we've talked about on Design Spark. I think that's a brilliant time to, to sum up and talk a little bit about where additional information can be found. The fact that, that these air systems can play a huge role in energy efficiency. They're clearly playing a big role in the future of the factory, the smart factory, and loads of other applications. We talked about medical, we talked about food preparation. So air systems are every bit as vital as anything else. And the fact that the new technologies that are being applied to other industrial automation systems are also being applied to air preparation which means they can be integrated into the smart factory and they offer lots of advantages in terms of energy efficiency, uh, effectiveness and the future of the factory. We will put loads of information on Design Spark to, to back up this video. There's diagrams, there's pictures, there's PDFs, there's loads of information that we will be able to find on Design Spark. The RS web will also have lots of information about the individual products, many of which Lisa mentioned, and we'll make sure that there are links in the article to go with that, which means that if you need to look at the products themselves and learn a little bit more about how they work, there'll be plenty of links that will allow you to go and delve into that information in depth. So the, I think the last thing for me to do is to thank Lisa so much for, for your time today and look at this different aspect of, of industrial controls that sometimes people like me in the electronics industry might overlook a little bit. So Lisa, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Dave, so much. And also thanks for having me here. No problem at all. Thank you everyone for watching. Find out more information on DesignSpark on RS Web, and we'll see you at the next Ask the Expert video.